Growth and development of the human embryo occurs here in the uterus, normally the size of a closed fist. In pregnancy, it can expand to 16 times its original weight. The tube-like oviducts emerge from either side of the uterus and reach out to bring an egg from one of the walnut-sized ovaries. Each month, an egg develops in an ovary within a small sphere called a follicle. The follicle swells and bursts at the surface of the ovary in response to an increase in follicle-stimulating hormone. Ovulation occurs when the thin-walled tip of the swelling ruptures, releasing the contents of the follicle over a period of several minutes. The egg emerges, looking like a small white sphere. The egg and the group of cells that surround and nourish it are called the cumulus mass. The cells hold the egg tightly in contact with the follicle until it is picked up by the end of the oviduct. The oviduct ends in a mass of ciliated folds called the fimbria. The cilia move the cumulus mass, here stained to appear as a dark spot, toward the opening of the oviduct. Damage to the fimbria, or blockage of the oviduct opening, are common causes of infertility. Cilia transport the egg through the oviduct to the uterus. Fertilization, if it occurs, happens here, with the developing zygote finishing the journey to the uterus. Blockage of the oviduct can cause infertility, or worse, development of the embryo in the oviduct. Flagellated sperm released in the vagina by the male during intercourse find their way to the egg through the cervix and uterus. Their transport is aided by rhythmic contractions of the cervix and uterine wall. Hours later, the nuclei of the egg and sperm fuse to form a diploid zygote and begin the cell divisions that are the first stages of development. Within three or four days, the small ball of dividing cells arrives at the uterus where the monthly hormonal cycle has prepared the uterine wall to accept the new embryo. At five weeks, the embryo is a little over a centimeter in length and floats in a clear amniotic sac. The elongated brain is still separated into its major parts. Here, the forebrain cavity, wedge-shaped hindbrain, and developing eye are visible, as are the paddle-like hands. At six weeks, the tail has begun to regress fingers appear. The sensory part of the eye, called the retina, has started to induce development of the lens and cornea. This slot on the back of the embryo is the spinal cord, which begins as a flat plate and will eventually close to form a tube. In the center is the lens of the eye. To the right is an ear, and to the left, the cerebral hemispheres are just beginning to form on the surface of the brain. The embryo's heart pumps blood through the umbilical cord and placenta to circulate oxygen, CO2, and nutrients. The umbilical cord emerges from the placenta and joins the embryo at the abdomen at a place that will eventually become the navel. At eight weeks, the nostrils have not yet opened, but the embryo exchanges amniotic fluid with its lungs through the open mouth. The bones and blood vessels of the hands can be clearly seen. In the developing leg are the Achilles tendon and calf muscle, the arm and elbow. At this stage, the external sex organs look the same in both sexes. This could be either a clitoris or a penis.